Okay, Matthew 5, we're talking about blessed people, and uh, this is the uh, second lesson, it's the Beatitude Blessed, number two, and uh, the people in the Beatitudes, I'm going to review, well, let's read verses 3 uh, through 9, then we'll uh, talk a little bit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at their righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You can say blessed or blessed, either one. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd help us to understand how to be blessed. I pray your spirit would uh, teach us. I pray today we would learn that there is a way um, to be blessed. There is ways that you promise we'll be blessed if we do these things, Lord. And Father, it's an amazing thing with such clarity and with such clear promises that we wouldn't just jump on these things and do them. <clears throat> but I pray that we would uh, learn these wh what we need to do, Father, and then you give us grace and strength to do it. Speak to us, Father, we pray, and uh, help us to be blessed, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just review the word blessed again, um, so we can kind of get that throughout the series. Mako, uh, makarios is the um, the Greek word. It's uh, a poetic word for supremely blessed. It's uh, by extension, it means fortunate or well off. <clears throat> and so um, sometimes uh, that causes happiness. Um, but but you won't understand the beatitude certainly if you think it means happy. Um, it's very important. You get the word blessed. I, wa I want you to get that definition uh, in your mind because sometimes the Bible, I think twice in the Bible, this word we just said in the Greek is translated happy. It's by context um, because sometimes you're blessed and you're happy and sometimes you're blessed and it doesn't mean you're happy. Uh, like we said, blessed are they that mourn. For example, let me illustrate it to you to help you understand the word a little more. Okay. Um, if you have children and your children are healthy, are you blessed? Okay. You're blessed, right? But is everybody who has children and healthy children, is everybody happy? No. So blessed doesn't always mean happy. Okay, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, you, God could be blessing you with a trial, and the trial is just is 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 making you suffer. But God is blessing you because you need that trial, and you're going. He's going to take you to a new place, and you're very blessed that God lets you go through that because God has given you His grace and strength, and He's going to make you better. So, bless. Understand that is God is not saying, "Man, you uh, you are a happy person if you have these things." Of course, you said that makes sense. Some, but usually, normally, in seven or eight out of ten times, a blessed person is happy. Okay, now they'll go through little times of not happiness, but but most of the time they're they're happy um, because they're blessed um, because they did the things to be blessed. Um, <clears throat> um, but um, some people uh, 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 get a a trial or something in their life or a circumstance where it brought a lot of sorrow, but in the end it was a big blessing to them. They're blessed people. They it it just wasn't a fun thing to go through. It just it wasn't anything like that. And uh, and so I want you to understand. I want you to get that definition of what blessed means because it'll help you a lot um, in understanding. Because the devil makes you think that if you're not happy, uh, you're, you're 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 God's not fair to you. But happy, God never, God doesn't promise happiness, okay? Uh, in this world, you have tribulation, and God doesn't do that. But it does say you'll be blessed if you have or do these things. And, uh, and so we see that. So let's, let's understand that definition of it. Um, you can be blessed and not be happy. God it could have blessed you, and you'd be a, a miserable, grumpy person. Okay? A lot of people don't know how good their life is. They're blessed. But they don't know their life's good. They don't know what they're, they're not appreciating. See, <laughs> blessed, blessed without appreciation makes you think you're miserable. And, uh, and so understand that. Um, stop if you're blessed and thank God you're blessed, whether you're happy or not. Okay? Thank God you're blessed. And uh, I can tell you, just looking around the room right here, all of you are blessed. Okay? You don't know my life, Pastor. First of all, you walked in here, right? Okay, so you're blessed with enough good health to walk in here. I didn't see anybody with a white cane. 
You, you, you're not blind. Um, right now, nobody's interpreting. If you need interpreting, we'll, we'll do it for you. But nobody here is deaf, I don't think. Sometimes I think my kids are, but then I, I, I uh, but, but, but you understand, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're at a Bible preaching church. Okay. You're saved. So you're blessed. Uh, if all those things are true. Um, but, but it might not mean the devil might sit on your shoulder and tell you, Hey, you know, no, everything's wrong with your life. You're, 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 you, God doesn't love you. It's terrible. Your life's terrible. And, and, but there's, a, there's, there's 6 billion people on earth who will trade places with you. <laughs> Understand that. And that, that's probably literally true. You know, um, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, but so, so thank God and, uh, and, and realize, uh, the devil loves to just tell you how, if, if life is 20 parts and you have two bad out of 20, the devil will let you think of nothing but the too bad. <laughs> You've got to focus on the good. And, uh, and, uh, and, but that's just, that, that's it. But, but God just says you're, you're blessed if you have these things. You're blessed if you are these things. More than anything, by the way, these characteristics are, <clears throat> some are things that are happening, but most of that, most, uh, but, but, but a whole bunch of those is what you are. I want to say one of the biggest things in Christian life is, is it's more important what you are than what you do. Because if you are what you're supposed to be, you'll do what you're supposed to do. But you can do what you're supposed to do in front of people without be being what you're supposed to be. The most important thing is become what you're supposed to be, and you'll end up in the end doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Did I say that wrong? <laughs> or is it just brilliant? When you're, you're, supposed, you're not supposed to laugh at brilliant, just so you know. You're supposed to go, oh, wow. And, uh, and uh, so, anyway, so we, we want to get those things. I want to be blessed. All right, let's see some blessed people here. I want to just finish up last week because I want to give you a little doctrine. <clears throat> in verse 3, uh, in, uh, in verse, uh, um, we said, uh, verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Who can tell me what meek is? Anybody remember? Michaela, you always answer. Somebody, Charlie? Humble. Humble's part of it. Who else can tell me something about meek? Chris? Well, power under control. Power under control. Good. And so we talked about the horse, and, uh, and, and, and so we learned a little bit about that. So meek, they inherit the earth. Now, what does that mean? I want to just, just teach you about the earth a little bit, just in, in a brief minute. Just I'm going to go to Psalm 25. It says the meek will inherit the earth. Okay. Um, uh, Psalm 25. Let me just take a few verses in Psalms. What does that mean, inherit the earth? A Jehovah's Witnesses love to quote these verses until you see it's, there's no, we're not going to heaven, we just live on earth forever. Um, I want you to understand just doctrinally, um, the meek inherit the earth. It is true that the earth will be there forever. Okay? Um, just show you that in, in, in Psalms. And we do inherit the earth. Um, Psalm 25 and verse 13. Um, his soul shall dwell at ease, and his, his seed shall inherit the earth. Um, and then uh, Psalm 37, and I'm just going to do a few verses on this. And uh, verse 9, it says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse 11, um, But the meek shall inherit the earth. Uh, again, it says that, and shall, delight them, uh, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. They inherit the earth. So, <clears throat> And the Bible says that the earth abides forever. It says that in a few different places. It says in Ecclesiastes, it says in Psalms and, and different things. Uh, let me just go to Psalm 37 and uh, verse uh, 22. For such as uh, as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and, and so forth. So we see these things. So um, what, what is the answer here? A um, few things. First of all, um, we see in Revelation 21, New Jerusalem, which is heaven, comes down from God out of heaven and descends down in the earth. Okay? Um, now, 2 Peter 3 is a key to understanding this. Uh, 2 Peter 3, so the earth abides forever, and, and uh, it says that in a couple places, and the meek will inherit the earth. Uh, 2 Peter 3 talks about this, and this is what's real important to understand clarity, is it's not this earth. <laughs> okay? Um, in Revelation 21, it says this, For I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. I think it's Revelation 21, 1 and 2. It says the first heaven and first earth are passed away. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. 
uh, Second Peter in chapter three, and uh, it says uh, verse ten. It says, "But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away, and with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also." And the works that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. So we see the elements are melted, it's burnt up, and now it's dissolved. Okay? Pretty strong wording. What manner of person ought you to be in all manner of holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting under the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with uh, fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So, it's a new earth. Same spot, okay? But God says, I got to melt this thing. He really melts the elements. I mean, down, if you melt elements, you understand, you're, you're, you're taking the whole thing. See, the, the world is sin cursed. The universe is sin cursed. It's, it has death. It has sin. It has all these things. And so God says, okay, the earth is going to abide forever, but I got I to gotta burn the curse off this thing. I got to melt it down to a big, here's a, here's a hunk of steel. I got to melt it down to, to nothing and reform it. Okay, because it's, it's wrong. It's bent. It's all wrong. I'm going to reform that thing. Um, it's kind of like if you took a house. Uh, let's say um, a house sat there vacant for 10 years and, and rats got into it and the roof leaked and the whole house was, was rotten and full of mold and uh, just completely trashed. Um, every piece of furniture in it, the carpet, the floor is falling through, the walls were leaning, okay? And somebody buys a property and says, you know what? Um, uh, I, 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 you know, this, this house, uh, let's, say, let's say the kid who grew up in it buys it and he has fond memories. He says, you know what? I'm going to rebuild that house. So he goes down and keeps a foundation and, and you know what he does? He just builds the same house on the same spot, but it's just tears it down to nothing. And you walk in the house and you go in and say, this is a new house. Yes, it is. But it's that, that, that same old house. It's the same place. It's the same thing. And that's what this earth, it'll be new Jerusalem and I'll be sitting heaven on earth, on this earth. Uh, by the way, uh, God says that Israel, the, the Jews will, will, will abide in that land forever. Okay? I believe they will. <laughs> it'd just be new, new, new earth. But actually, if you look at it, uh, heaven, uh, new Jerusalem is 1500 by 1500 miles by 1500 miles. And so that's new Jerusalem. It comes down. It's the new Jerusalem. Follow that. I believe that heaven, which is where Jesus is right now, where when we die, we go and all those things. When God comes back and when everything's done, everything's burnt and everything's reformed. I believe it's, and I think it's pretty clear um, the new Jerusalem comes down and sits down on the promised land. And that's where God's people are. And the earth is there. We're going to all be in heaven, love heaven. We can do, we can go on the earth all we want um, and, and everything. We inherit it. Okay. Um, will we live all around this new earth? Because God's going to reform it for a reason. Uh, I don't know. We don't know that. The Bible doesn't tell us that. Um, we know during the millennium, we rule and reign with him, and some of us get 10 cities, and some of us get one city, and, and we get our rewards according to what we've done in the world and, and things. We rule and reign with him. So we, in authority, during the thousand-year reign, we, we live on earth and rule and reign with him. Um, but uh, I think the whole world will probably be inhabited and beautiful. It'll be the Garden of Eden again, um, just with, with heaven literally sitting there on top of earth, and, uh, and it'll be like that forever, and uh, we, will, we will be there. And, uh, and, and so that, that'll be what it's like. It'll be a lot better than this earth. It, you, you can see how nice and nice people see a property on earth is, is look at, you could pick your best place in the entire, in the entire world. And, 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 and if you could pick it and pick your property and pick your house and everything, look, it will, it won't hold a candle to what heaven's like and what you'll have in heaven. I mean, it's better than that. It's just so, so much more of a priority, but that's why it says the meek shall inherit the earth. And, uh, so I just wanted to understand that doctrine of, of the world and the earth and what's going to happen to it. Back to Matthew 5. That's, that's about three lessons uh, that should take about an hour each. Uh, so I hope you got it, the basics of it. So, um, But that's what it looks like. So, Okay, we said blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those that mourn, blessed are the meek. Um, and we said those, and now, uh, verse 6, Blessed are those which do hunger and thirst at their righteousness, for they shall be filled. Those who hunger and thirst at their righteousness. This was, 
the most important verse in the Bible to me for my first two years as a Christian. I claim this verse all the time when I was a new Christian. I, I, uh, when I was a new Christian, Matthew 5 was my favorite chapter, and, uh, and, and, and uh, this was my verse that I always claimed to God. Why? Because I had no character and no discipline in my life. I, I was just uh, an undisciplined kid with, with no character. I, I didn't get that growing up, and so here I was, 16, 17 years old, trying to serve the Lord, but I had no discipline whatsoever. I, I didn't have character. I didn't have, I, I wasn't steady. I wasn't, uh, I didn't know how to work hard. I was lazy. Um, I had f- a million character flaws, like undisciplined in mind, body, spirit, everything. And man, it looked like an insurmountable hill to climb. Look, if you grew up with the least character, you can say, all right, I need to dis- 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 myself and schedule this to read my Bible. Okay. You, you grew up, you, got, you had character. I didn't have that. I had nothing. I had nothing but uh, sin and, and the world in me, and and I didn't even have a, a good upbringing, or at least I had discipline in my life. I had no discipline. I was lazy. I never did a chore in my life. Okay, uh, and, and I don't say that like I don't say it like well, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I'm, I literally never did a chore in my life. Um, I, I I was uh, I was never spanked. I was only beaten by a drug dealer brother, and and uh, I, I just I was never uh, under control. I went to school. I didn't want to go to school. I did what I wanted to do. I left. I came home. I, I'd be gone for so six years old. I'd leave for two or three days at a time. I never had any rules in my life. And all of a sudden, I found out God God wants me to do some things here, but I didn't have the strength in me or the character in me to do anything or the discipline. And that's, uh, by the way, that's why you instill in your kids disciplines so they can choose to do right. Because you can want to do right, but you have no self-control. You can't do right. And thus God gives you the strength to do it. Discipline and character makes life a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to do what you're supposed to do. I had none of that. So I kept saying, God, I want to be a good Christian, but I'm too weak. I'm, I, Lord, but you said, and I don't, nobody ever taught me this. I think the Holy Spirit just gave it to me. You promised, blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I am hungry and thirsting after righteousness. And I'd claim that promise to God all the time. Every day I'd claim that promise to God. It was my favorite verse in the Bible. I claim this verse all the time because it's you're going to be blessed if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Um, and, and what a great promise that is. Amen? That's God's promise. If you hunger and thirst at the righteousness, you'll be filled. That's a promise of God. How many want to be more righteous? And and but claim that, claim that, and 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 go to God with that. But you've got to do that. Your part is to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I want to say this: the Lord is glad. The Lord is glad to help you uh, fulfill that need. When you want to serve God, God wants to help you do it. Look at Psalm 63. I think it's a beautiful verse. Psalm 63, and I think it's verse 8. It's just beautiful the way the Lord says this. Psalm 63, 8. See, God wants to help you get close to Him. Psalm 63, 8. My soul... Followeth hard after thee. So I'm following hard after God. Thy right hand upholdeth me. What a beautiful picture. We're trying to reach out and chase after God and get close to him. And God's holding our hand in case we fall and keeping us close to him. When you're trying to serve God, uh, striving against sin, as Hebrews uh, 12 phrase it, when you're trying to serve God, God wants you to be close to him. It's like when my kids come to me when they're little and they say, Dad, I want to buy you a present. Can you give me some money? Well, okay. It's a way to circumvent everything, and uh, you know. And then I just I give them the money and tell what I want, and uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, and and so uh, when when your kid uh, says, "Can uh, Dad? Can you give me something to draw? I want to draw. I, I want to write. I love you on a piece of paper. Can you give me a? Uh, can you get me some crayons and a piece of paper? Well, yeah. I want them to do that. And God wants you to be righteous, and He wants you to be close to Him. And if you want it, He's going to fulfill that thing. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, and, and and so it's a promise of God. God wants to help you do that. But the key is to stay hungry. Don't quit striving and pressing when you fail. I press. Paul said, "Paul," he said, "I have not yet. I, I count not myself to apprehend it." 
But this one thing I do, I press toward the mark of the high price. He's still pushing toward it. See, here's the thing. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. Okay? Too often what we do, we end up, we fall, and we say, oh, I'm just miserable, and you know, God is just, he's always mad at me. And, and you lay there instead of getting back up and striving and hungering and thirsting. See, we, we've raised a generation of quitters. And that's the, the hardest thing that, that, that the generation rising up is going to, and it is, and we're, already, we're already dealing with it massively with, with 14, 15, 16, 20, 25, is they try, they fail, and, okay, I'll give up. They, they, they try to start a business, their business fails, okay, I'll give up, I'm done. <laughs> How many times most businessmen fail in business before they get the successful business? There's studies on this stuff, and it's multiple times. Be surprised how many claim bankruptcy. Your president claimed bankruptcy. And he's a billionaire. Okay? Understand, you're going to fail. Abraham Lincoln lost all kinds of elections. <laughs> okay? But people, they, 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 they go out and they try. I tried to get a job. Nobody hired me. I'm going to go. I'm going to go play Xbox. <laughs> That's it? But we've raised a generation where I try to be a good Christian and I messed up and so I give up. Okay, I tried to be a good Christian, I messed up and I got back up and kept trying. Because Jesus deserved me to keep trying. Look, there are so many marriages who made it because people kept trying. And, 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 and there's so many people who, who are doing great things but they failed and slipped and fell. Every person who climbs Mount Everest doesn't climb right at the top and never slips once. Okay? You have to understand the hunger and thirst. I want to serve God. I want to be a good Christian. I'm going to keep trying and keep striving and keep going to church. I'm going to keep on praying. I, mean, I messed up. I had a bad week, but you know what? I'm going to get back up and keep trying. I'm not giving up. Why? Because Christianity isn't something that's a little fat of your life. Christ is your life. He's what your life is about. It's a total change of direction. It's not about you being happy. It's about you glorifying God and pleasing Christ and reaching the world. And you cannot fail. And you keep getting back up. And you keep striving. And you keep hungering and thirsting. And you keep hungering and thirsting. Because if you keep hungering and thirsting, you will be filled. That's God's promise. You think you can become a good Christian when you've been in the world for 10 or 20 or 30 years and all of a sudden you say, I'm going to serve God. I went to church for one month and I tried. You were in the world and the devil messed with you and turned your brain to soup for 30 years. And messed you up and brought a whole bunch of sin. It's going to take some effort and some trials. Okay? And you got to keep on hungering and thirsting. If you keep on trying and keep on praying and keep on claiming the promises and keep on hungering and thirsting, you get it. I had, I had it was about two years with me of hungering and thirsting. And, 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 and look, I'm still hungering and thirsting, but where I was just out of, you know, I was out of the spiritual hospital. And, and able to and 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 got the the really bad things out of my life, and I was having victory, and 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 looked like a halfway decent Christian, uh, and uh, and and it took me a couple of years just to because I was messed up, but I hungered and I thirsted. I wanted to be a good Christian. It was so obvious to me. I lived in the world. I saw what the world was like. It was so obvious to me the way of God was right. The Christian life was so superior. I saw that. I could look at the families I knew in the world and look at the Christian families I saw at church and say, it's not a hard choice. It's like, it's like going and grabbing up that chewed up burger out of the garbage or going eating that nice steak over there. It's not a hard choice for me. I want to serve God. That's the way to live. This is great, man. This is fulfilling. This is rich. Uh, I, I, my few times when I got close to God, I said, man, the, the joy and the peace and the fulfillment here, that's what I've always wanted. Never been able to find. It was it was obvious. And I said, I'm, I need to serve God. And, and my motives weren't always perfect, and my strength wasn't always there. But you hunger and you thirst, and you keep on going. And I still do. And I still slip up. And I still fail. And I still want to be a better Christian. You say, man, it's discouraging, Pastor. You've been doing it that long, and you're still not perfect. No, it's not discouraging. It's like you're in a football game, and you got tackled behind the line of scrimmage one time. 
I'm still in the lead. I'm still up by 45 points. Okay, I'm gonna. We're, it's it's only first down. It's second down now. It, it, look, there's lots. Just keep on hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Keep on at because God wants to help you. His desire is you to be a good Christian. It's God that worketh in you both to will, that's a desire, and to do of his good pleasure. God gives you the desire and then he gives you the strength to do it. But not if you lay there, there and wallow in your failures. If you, you fail and you lay around and wallow and say, oh, I'm so terrible. Well, yeah, you're terrible. So am I. There's none righteous, no, not one. You didn't know that from the start? You got to start there. I don't deserve God to love me. Once you realize you're terrible, and then you realize God loves you anyway, and he saved you anyway, and he's there for you, you fall in love with him, and failing is not an option. Because you love him so much. Because it's about him, not you anymore. Most people are so about them, it's, it's I'm this, and I'm that, I'm a failure. It doesn't matter. It, give, God to, give God a failure. It's not about you, it's about God. Get back up. <laughs> How do I make the beatitude seem mean? It's amazing. And uh, and, uh, and uh, blessed. Let's go back to Matthew 5. It's because you all laughed at me earlier. See what you get? And uh, Matthew 5. Blessed are those who do hunger. And they're going to be blessed, aren't they? Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst of the righteous. Why? For they shall be filled. They shall be filled. If you were as hungry for being a good Christian as you are for food, as you are for the donut over there, you'd probably become a great Christian. Probably would. I wonder which, which hunger is stronger. The hungry get filled. You get a rich big meal and you're stuffed and say, man, I, I feel like I've, man, I've come a long way and boy, I'm, I'm having victory. But you got to keep on fighting. You got to keep on hungering and thirsting. Next, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So the, the promise, it, it, the result is they shall obtain mercy. Why are you blessed if you're merciful? Because you're going to obtain mercy. 